All right. So the next slide that I have up here is simulation convergence. <clears throat> you know, I do a lot of training on 3DCS and it's always been confusing because people say, well, how many simulations do I need to run to be confident that my results are correct? And you can see, you know, normally we type numbers in here and when I'm training someone, I'm like, well, when I'm building the model, I run, you know, a thousand, two thousand, just so I get an idea. And then, you know, for the final simulation, I might run 10,000. And we put that in the report and everything. Well, we've enhanced the software now to eliminate that question based on what information you want. So if you type in your confidence level and you type in the amount of error you want you are willing to allow in your standard deviation, then based on this chart, we will automatically define how many simulations to run. <clears throat> this chart's been tested, and so you know this is essentially what we're using. So if I come back over to the software, now, When I go to run an analysis, oh, look at that. Doesn't want me to run it without building it. You have this new button here, recommended based on convergence study. If I click on this, you can see it grays out the number of simulations and it automatically goes to 21.37. That's controlled inside your options based on this setting. So if I come in here and say, well, no, I wanna be 99% confident and 1% error, let's go back here. You can see it upped it to 33,178. Generally, you don't wanna be that accurate. That'll take a long time to run that simulation. And the default is, oops, the default is 95% and 3% error. So now um, I, I can't remember, and Dave will have to bring it up, um, whether or not this is checked on or off by default. I think it might still be checked off by default and you'll have to turn it on. And once it's on, then this number will be a function of what's set in your preferences here. Not a whole lot to cover after that, once I set it and I go to run an analysis, turn that on, run the analysis, everything else is the same. So, I'm not sure if any of you guys have had this happen to you, but since we're talking about, um, since we're talking about number of samples, I have ran 2,000 samples and my output results, well here, let me, let me jump back to this PowerPoint real quick and go here. We've improved our normality testing. So what I was getting at is I've had models where I ran 2,000 and the curve fitting said it was normal and I ran 10,000 and all of a sudden it's a Pearson 1 or something. So that happens because the accuracy of normality decreases with more samples. So we've enhanced the software to make the normality testing more consistent. And um, we test it for normality now at 2000 samples. And this is just showing, you know, multiple different ways of testing for normality. And you can see that at 2000 samples, they all kind of generalize here. So, you know, this is an enhancement you're not really going to see. It's just something that came up, um, you know, so now if you run 2,000 or 10,000, if it was normal at 2,000, it's gonna be normal at 10,000. <laughs>